Hey guys, in this tutorial of Fong Shading, I'm going to show you guys how to make this shader and apply in uh, GTK Radiant. So, um, to make this shader, let's go to our BaseQ3 folder. Go to scripts. I'm going to go to my shader that I'm using now. Um, so, what I'm highlighted here is the basic uh, shader format for font shading. It's going to be uh, textures, your map name, and uh, the texture name you're going to see in Radiant. Then uh, just basically copy and paste what I have here or use the shader from the PK3 when the map will be done. Anyway, uh, your shade. What you want to look at is your shade angle. Q3 map shade angle. The higher the number, b the number will be. Uh, uh, the more smooth and round your terrain will look. But the downside on that is your um, your shadows will also be produced round and not how they actually are. If you follow what I'm saying. And um, your editor image. That's what's shown in Radiant only. That doesn't show in game. So for example, it's called Stone 4 underscore B underscore Thong. If I look in Radiant, we'll do Find and Replace. That texture right there, that says Thong Shader on it, which is, I'll show you where it is. Textures, Ghost, One Star 2. As you can see, that's it right there. Um, basically, to create that shader, just uh, open a texture in Paint or Photoshop or whatever you have, and uh, make a new text uh, text line and just write Thong Shader on it and call it the same texture name underscore Thong or whatever the hell you want to call it. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so. And then you save it into your uh, map name folder or your your own custom folder, whatever folder you want to save in. I don't, I don't really, doesn't really matter. It's up to you, but I like to stay organized and keep in my uh, map name folder. So once you got that written down, your editor image is going to be that, what you're going to see in Radiant, which is this texture here. Or this texture here, it basically says Fong Shader on it. The main purpose of this is so you won't get safe. Uh, perfect example here. Let me scroll back. As you can see, I'm using the same two textures, but they're actually two different textures because this is terrain right here, and this is a regular floor brush right here. Let me just pull this back. So, if you look, just select these two, this is terrain, so I'm using a fog shader on it. But the rest over here is a flat surface, so I'm just going to use a regular my regular texture brush. So, that's the difference of uh, the fog shader. Uh, the purpose of using QER editor image. So, uh, it, it's useful so you don't get confused between which texture which one you're using at which point just so you know and well the rest is uh, self-explanatory your secondary texture would be the actual texture that you're using and that's pretty much it for the shader file once you've got that done save it put it in your uh, shaderless txt all that crap and then when you open up radiant you're going to load your uh, texture path and you're just gonna apply the textures like this um, you're gonna hold control shift left click so you select the face only and then you're gonna <clears throat> you can either um, left click on the uh, the texture view or you can hit mouse 3 on the um, 
on this right here. Basically, what the difference is between hitting it over here and on the on the 3D view is, say, if your uh, your textures are misaligned, this hitting it in the um, in a texture window will align it naturally and perfectly the way it should be. And if you hit it over here on the uh, 3D camera, it'll align it according to the 3D camera view. But um, everything is perfect as is, so it wouldn't you wouldn't even notice a difference. So I'm just gonna select these. These over here. You want to select every visible face, even if it's a small little dot in a little corner. You want to select that as well. And it takes 2.37 seconds to save. It's quite a lot. So I'm just going to finish up vertexing. Now right here, I'm going to cut this open. Oops. Let's go like this. Now I'm going to have this part right here showing the sky. Hmm. That looks fine, I guess. And then I'm going to vertex these. I'm going to drag this down, down, down. Pull that down. You don't want to pull it too down, especially where I am at right now because it's very low ceiling, so the player might hit it. So I might have to go back and fix that later on. Wrong one. There we go. So that's pretty much it. And no, this is not right here. Let me drag these. Now to avoid any complication you'll get with um, like before I was using beams to shoot down from up here onto the floor. Now if you're going to use beams you do not want to vertex um, these edges right here because it will be a pain in the ass to freaking um, set up the brush brushing brush work right so you don't overlap textures. I must have wasted a good um, two hours just messing with that on myself my own time so stay away from that but what I will do is even these textures out these brushes out so it's leveled for example I'm gonna level these out so now these textures are straight so if I wanted to put uh, beams in them they would level out just perfectly but then again I would have to do it here as well and as you can see it loses its um its creativity because now it just looks plain flat wall flat ceiling so I'm probably not gonna add beams anyway because that's a freaking pain in the ass I don't want to deal with that again so I'm just gonna make these nice and bumpy that looks fine I don't really care anymore to be honest I just want to get this map done with And as you can see, the textures aren't lining up anymore. Oh, well, that's why it's not lining up anymore. I'm going to pause this video now, and uh, I'm going to compile and show you what it looks like in-game. And this is the outcome. It's a bit dark, so... Bear with me, but 
this is what it looks like. Let me show you other parts of the map. Yeah, it's really dark map, but uh, I'm still working on that, so yeah. And that's it. So, peace.